today we're going to talk about half-life. <clears throat> Uh, and the idea of half-life is that you have a, a radioactive substance that decays over time, and the half-life is the time it would take for 50% of the uh, perce uh, previous proportion to remain. So you can think of it as um, a substance would start out with 100%. Once you take the half-life once, you would have 50% of the uh, original proportion remaining. Once you take the half-life a second time, you would have 25% of the original remaining. Once you take the half-life a third time, you have half the previous percentage, or now 12.5% of the original. And then this trend would continue. Uh, you can keep taking the half-life infinitely, and you would end up with you know, very minute uh, amounts of uh, the radioactive substance remaining, uh, but there would still be a small percentage in which you can take the half-life. It would never actually reach zero. Uh, a common fallacy here, people would say that uh, if you take half of the original twice, you would now have zero. Half-life means that it's going to be half the previous amount. Uh, so let's take a look at an example together. So a radioactive substance uh, decays exponentially. Uh, and we know what an exponential model looks like. Uh, a scientist begins with 100 milligrams of a radioactive substance. After 30 hours, 50 milligrams remains. So uh, you, know, you can see that 50 would be half of 100. So here we have a half-life of uh, 30 hours. Uh, so you could think of it as 50% or 50 milligrams remain after 30 hours. 25% uh, or 25 milligrams would remain after 60 hours. So 50% after 30 hours, 25% after 60 hours, 12.5% after 90 hours. The question asks, how many milligrams will remain after 49 hours? So 49 hours would be between 30 and 60 hours. So you know it's going to be, the, our answer is going to be between 50 and 25 milligrams. So let's start <clears throat> by talking about uh, an exponential decay model. So I'll put this right here. So uh, one way you can write an exponential decay model would be 1 minus the rate raised to the t times our initial amount. All right. Um, in this particular question, we're looking for 48 hours, so we're looking for uh, A sub 48, or excuse me, not 48, 49 hours, so we're looking for A sub 49, and so we're looking for 1 minus the rate raised to the 49 times P naught, our initial value, and we know P naught to be 100 milligrams. So times 100 milligrams. This is what we're interested in calculating. So we would need our rate. Well, what can we do to solve for our rate? And we're going to get into a little bit of algebra here. Uh, we don't know, right now we don't know what the rate would be. Uh, but let's think about half-life. Uh, we know that after 30 hours, 50 milligrams remain. So we know that if we took a look at A sub 30, if we plug in 30 hours, we would have 
50 milligrams remaining. And so now we have an equation and we could go about solving for R. So the first thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 100. So we'd have 1 minus R raised to the 30. And in a second I'm going to do something to streamline this process, but let's go about solving for R for right now. Obviously 50 divided by 100 would be 0.5 or a half, which makes sense. We're, we're talking about half-life. I'll we'll write it as 0.5. All right, so from here, we need to do something to get rid of this exponent. Uh, so I'm going to pull out a fractional exponent. So I'm going to raise this to the 1 over 30. We know that 30 times 1 over 30 would be the same as 30 over 1 times 1 over 30, which would equal 1. Anything raised to the first power would just be that item. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So this would give us just 1 minus r. What you do to one side in algebra, you have to do the other. So since I raised this side to 1 over 30, I will raise this side to 1 over 30. And so I will get 0 0.5 raised to the 1 over 30. We can plug and chug this. It's not going to be a very pretty decimal. We'll do that in a second. Now we have a few other things to do to get r by itself to solve for r. We'll start by subtracting 1 from both sides. And then we need to do something to get rid of the negative sign. We can multiply both sides by negative 1. That will make r positive. I'm going to think of it as times negative 1 on both sides. The negative 1 will take this guy and make it negative. It will take this guy and make it positive. So r will equal 1 plus 0 0.5. 1 over 30. All right. So we can go back to this and now plug in for R. Uh, if we wanted to take our calculator, and I have my calculator here, we could determine a decimal approximation for this. So we're going to do 1 plus 0 0.5 raised to the 1 over 30. Uh, excuse me, I did 1 plus. Oh, this needs to be a minus sign. I got the sign wrong there. I could tell I had the sign wrong because this needs to be a rate. There we go, that looks a lot better. Um, and you can multiply that by 100. You're looking at about 2.28% uh, would be our decay rate per year, roughly. You want to be very, very careful here about um, rounding because rounding can make a really big difference. Um, so we could round this, I'll write it down here. roughly. We could then plug this in for R and we would be done. Um, so let's take a look at what all that would look like. So A sub 49, which is what it's asking for, would be 1 minus 0 0.0228 
raised to the 49 times 100. So let's plug and chug that together. So I'm going to do 1 minus, I don't feel like taking the time to, calc to enter all that, so I'm going to do 1 minus the answer, raised to the 49 times 100. All right, I'll hit enter, and so we get About 32 point, let's say, 2.3 milligrams. Second decimal place is a reasonable place to round. Um, so this is one approach for answering this question. Um, but I wanted to take a second and, and look at a way that we can streamline this. So let's develop a shortcut that would uh, get us to this answer without having to do a full page worth of algebra. So to develop this shortcut, instead of plugging in our decimal approximation for our rate, let's plug it in without the decimal approximation. So here, uh, a sub 49 equals 1 minus, you want to be really careful about parentheses here, 1 minus 0 0.5 raised to the 1 over 30, and then all of that is going to be raised to the 49 times 100. All right, so I'm going to take this negative sign and distribute it, so the 1 will become negative, and this will now become positive. So you have 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.5, 1 over 30, raised to the 49 times 100. Obviously, 1 minus 1 would equal 0. So we would just have 0 0.5 raised to the 1 over 30 raised to the 49 times 100. All right. Give me a second. We're about there. So from here, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So we can write this as 49 over 30 times 100. So I would say that if there was a way we can hop from the original question to this setup. We could hop from here to here. If there was a shortcut for hopping from here to here, that would be a lot quicker than going through all of this algebra to get the answer. So let's take a look at the question, and then let's take a look at our setup for the answer. Uh, and think about well, what could we do to get here quicker. So here I have 0.5, and we're talking about half-life. All right, so this is a this is sort of a generalized form of the shortcut here, a generalized form of the shortcut. So you have 0.5 representing half-life. The 49 was the time that it asked for. So we have the time divided by 30, which was the half-life. And then times our initial value, or I'll just label it right now as p naught, what we started with. And just to point out, I can take the calculator here I can plug and chug 0.5 raised to the 49 over 30 times 100. And you can see I'm getting the same thing as I did when I did all of this algebra a second ago. So it's definitely a streamlined process. So similarly, 
let's use our shortcut here. Let's look at a similar example. So let's say a radioactive substance begins with 300 milligrams, and then after 40 hours, 150 milligrams remain. How many milligrams will remain after, what do you want to, what do you want to say? Let's go with uh, 82 hours. Okay, so similar question here. Now we're dealing with 30 milligrams. Uh, after 40 hours, 150 milligrams remain. How many will remain after uh, 82 hours? So using our shortcut here, we're going to take 0 0.5, our time would be 82 hours, our half-life is 40 hours, and our initial value is 300. So I'll take my calculator here, clear all that out, I'm looking at 0 0.5 raised to the 82 over 40 times 300. Now just as a sanity check, if you think about 82 hours, you would expect 50% to remain after the first time you take a half-life, after 40 hours. You would expect 25% to remain after 80 hours. This is 82. This would be just past uh, our second half-life. So you're going to expect um, just a tad below 25% remaining. 25% of uh, 300 would be around 75. So we're expecting our answer to be just a little bit below 75. And as you can see, it is just a little bit below 75. So it's 72.4, let's go with 4 or 5 here milligrams remaining. Second decimal place is always a nice place to round. Uh, and let's look at one more example here. Let's throw in another little curveball. Let's say we're taking a look at 30 milligrams after, let's go with uh, 40 hours, and let's say that 75 milligrams remain. How many milligrams remain after 82 hours? So now, during this 40 hour period, we've gone from 300 milligrams to 150 milligrams to 75 milligrams in, excuse me, 40 hours. So that would mean we have a half-life of 20 hours. So to set all this up, we are taking a look at 0 0.5 raised to the, we're still looking for 80, 82 hours. So 82 divided by 40 times our initial amount, which would be 300. And I can take my calculator here. Plug and chug this. And I'm getting about, excuse me, I wrote 40 here. It would now be 20. 20 hours is now my half-life. So I can take the calculator. And we would have about 17.49 milligrams remaining.